welcome back it's all systems go but not yet sadly with the steampunk time zone truck clock which is all ready to go but I need to find out from Erin the truck driver how large the um, wooden door is going to be so I can finally get it all mounted up but during the meanwhile never a dull moment what's this I hear you cry well Originally, when I designed the NEPNET Throbwell Kitchen Timer Kit, I made 10, thinking no one's going to want this. And then they sold out, and so I made another 10, and so on and so forth. And then I thought, well, this is a waste of time, let's make 20. So I made 20, and 20, and 20, and 20, and this time, because they ran out within about two weeks, I'm making 40, the unprecedented step. So if you remember in the past, I went ahead and ordered a load of these, a hundred of these, from the manufacturer, so that's great. And the word finally managed to get out now, the um, coronavirus thing is lifting, the restrictions managed to go to the woodyard, get some proper wood, got all these bits have arrived, it's all so exciting, got them packaged up yesterday. Here are all the plumbing fittings, I'm just waiting for some M10 bolts to arrive. 40! Would you Adam and Eve it? Just got all these 40 lots cut out with that lovely laser ply. I've got all these ready to go, so we're really, really, really close. Most suppliers have been brilliant at very quickly supplying what I've ordered. I mean, obviously there are a couple of issues which hold everything up, but never mind. Oh, and while I think of it, remember these knobs, the turned beach knobs? I had so many problems drilling a hole through the centre and then cutting that off to three millimetres. It took ages, and so often I'd do it, and it wasn't centred, and then I'd have to chuck them away or save them for a rainy day. But this time, dear friends, making 40, I came up with a new idea. Suddenly, in the middle of the night, the amazing thing about subconsciousness solving problems when you're meant to be sleeping. What I realised was, I had one of these. I don't know why I didn't think of it sooner. It is a 4.1mm drill, but it is short. So basically, it doesn't wibble wobble around so much, because if you remember, I was doing it with the V-block. I was trying it on the lathe, that wouldn't work, and I was trying it with the V-block on the pillar drill, that kept wandering off, and I suddenly I woke up in the night thinking, hang on a minute, is it 4.1? Let's try it on the lathe. So, so I'll put this short one in here. Because I'm drilling into the end grain, I think the long standard drill bit size, it just would find a little bit of difference in the grain and then wander off and by the time it reached the other end, it was useless. The other great thing is that you don't need to use a centre drill anymore because this is so stiff that it finds the centre. And also little things like not having to drill all the way through because I'm cutting the end of this spigot off. I don't need it to go all the way through so I set that on here. It's little things like that that make such a lot of difference and bring joy into my life. And if you remember, the other problem, the next problem with this, it was trying to balance it on the end of this which was potentially finger loss losing. Lining it up like that, holding this on here and trying to run it across through the bandsaw, which was a disaster way to happen. This time I thought, let's just make a jig. And it took me five minutes. It's ridiculous. I don't know why I didn't do it sooner. Piece of wood, drill a 25mm hole, leaving a little bit at the back to the right depth. Cut it in half on the bandsaw, drill a couple of holes, put some dowling through. So, and this is just, it's a dream, I tell you. So that goes in, you push that in, you do that, once you line that up. No fingers near speedily moving blades at all. I am thrilled. Also, starting to believe that I'm single-handedly keeping the Vuvuzela market going during the pandemic when there's been no football matches or sporting events because early on the company, the Spanish company I bought them from stopped trading, currently not telling anyone, never mind and then I've subsequently gone through other suppliers and other manufacturers and they've slowly all dried up now I'm just left to search the web for anyone selling this make and then bind them up. Luckily, found a German company who was selling them. 
and they had practically a loads and loads of the English variety because you get them in different colours which I don't mind because I'm going to paint them so that was lucky surprise surprise perhaps I should try a French supplier and see how many of the English team colours they've got who knows so anyway I've got enough I'm so pleased I've got enough to make these 40 at least and hopefully by that time the manufacturers will have started reproduction again now for another potential development. Could be a disaster, who knows, but it's worth a try. Here's the pump. That needs to connect airtightly into this, push this into a piece of copper pipe. And the way I was doing that was on a 10mm acrylic, using the laser cutter to cut out disc circles, then drill out the hole precisely, then glue them in. That's ah, just such a faff and lots of times it would be too distorted it also meant I'd have to really get rid of all the swarf around the end even though I've already de deburred these so they're not sharp but it still leaves a little overhang that I'd have to file out so I think it's worth tons of time etc etc to try a different way of doing it so I've stuck this onto some um, metallic tape which I've got which I think has got very good quality glue adhesive on it and I've got some of this casting resin. So what I'm going to do, I'm not going to try it because I'm not that sensible. I'm going to get all 40 of these stuck down on tape, mix this up and then pour a bit into each of them. So sort of half full. Then hopefully when they're set, they'll definitely have a good seal because this stuff is so sticky. Hopefully when they're set, I can then peel this tape off. Possibly not. We'll have to wait and see and then put them in the lathe, drill the hole out in the middle, Bob's your uncle fun is your aunt. So, that's what we're going to try now. Well, it could be worse, possibly. Well, yeah, it's not bad. Well, um, none of these, I'm very pleased, obviously it's a steep learning curve, but none of these have come unstuck, because they could have dissolved with the resin, and then all the resin poured out and it ended up in some hideousness. But that hasn't happened, it was very difficult to get to stop it well it was impossible to stop it pouring because it's so gooey from one to the next so it's all strung down the outside which I'm hoping is going to be fairly easy to get off I don't know and then to pour it I realized I can make a nice pouring thing out of one of these lovely Heinz big soup beef and vegetable tins no affiliation although I have to say this is what I'm currently eating with a piece of toast for lunch they're lovely I can't look, having eaten baked beans for years, a tin of cold baked beans every lunchtime, I can't look a baked bean in the eye anymore. Perhaps it'll come back to me. But the great thing about this is that I could just bend it and get it into a pouring thing. Now, I didn't know how long this was going to take to set, and it's still runny, so I probably could have taken far longer, but live and learn. Now, whilst that is setting, I think I'm going to do another job on my list of jobs around the home which is to fix the steampunk gothic toilet. This is going to be very cramped, but there's the door. It was made from gravel boards, which are the bits of wood, the rough bits of wood that go along the bottom of fences. A nice, couple of nice big gate hinges and some pretend square head screws. Right, forgive the focus, sound, etc. And the fact I haven't got a wide-angle lens. But you get the drift. There's the loo. Cabinet at the back for the cistern. A stained glass window, sort of, that represents the digestive system. And a nice little gargoyle. And me getting tangled up with wires. There's the gargoyle. Oh, and coincidentally, there's the original fuse box that was came with the house originally when it was first 1933 one. Thought I'd keep it to run the security lights on, off. There we are. So there's your esophagus, stomach, etc., etc. And exciting things made by the kids and then we go down and the rectum just above here and then in here there's obviously the cistern and bits and pieces so what it also has are some sound effects let's go and switch them on here's where the magic happens built this i think it's 30 years ago or 20 years lovely old mapped electronics analog bucket brigade delay line and here's the box that has the sound effects and bits and pieces in it with a sort of pseudo-random generator. So you're not quite sure what you're going to have. So, 
switch on the light and the sound effects start and the lightning you can hear this the echo and also it sounds like the smoothing capacitors are going because you can hear mains hum but basically every time you get uh, thunder you'll get some lightning just before it and you'll see the flickering through the window which obviously is isn't going to do that's it right so there's a light bulb hidden out here this is sort of a mock inside window so there's a light bulb there also all these cobwebs took ages to make about 20 years there's also a shape here which has got a light bulb and the loudspeaker for the echo behind it and that was fun to make there's the dog going spare because she can hear the bell chiming and the dog howling the mind now the echo the microphone is just in here. I don't suppose we can, it's too dark in here. There's a little electric microphone sitting there that feeds that. Also, yeah, that's right, I changed the volume randomly as well, so. And just by getting the volume just right, it means you don't get any feedback, so you get the nice echo and the sound effects, but no feedback. There's also a very handy indicator to let you know when the system's full and likely to flush again. I did that after we used to have lots of parties here. It's very useful to be able to see. There's a glass tube up the middle so you can see what height the water reached. A little twiddly bit down there. And that was made a long time before I'd even known that steampunk existed. It's crazy. Now the toilet is operated theoretically by pushing on the foot pedal, but as you can see, it doesn't work. What I'll do is to take this to pieces so I can get to it, because I've got a shrewd suspicion as to what's causing the problem, and it'll be the stupid use, this plast cheap plastic disc that they use in the siphon to lift the water out of the system to start it going, which will have perforated. So, let's get this to pieces, and I'll get back to you. That's better. I've got a 60 watt light bulb in there now. Right. I can get a better idea of what pain these things are to put right because it's full of water and that's the um, old siphon starter so I've got to take the whole lot, drain it all down, unscrew the bottom of it to get this bit out on the end of that hook is the plunger right, let's get on with that here's the offending article basically it sits like that, that goes down to the cistern flush on the, on the toilet bowl and then the water sits up up to there when you pull on this you can see that platform inside gets pulled up really quickly um, the plastic flap pushes against it lifts the water up over the top and starts the siphon amazingly clever and simple and effective and then as the water level drops this has got a water saving feature which is this hole here so once the water level drops to there, air is allowed in, breaks the system, stops, uh, breaks the siphon, stops it working, and then the water level remains here and then starts filling up again just to save water. It's brilliant, other than this bit. So let's take this apart. I've had to fix so many of these, I've got quite good at it. Right, I'll unhook that, and then that's it. So half an hour to get that out of the wretched system, and then this is it, so you can see there's the broken membrane. So what I'll do, I'll take off what I've got and then draw round it and make a new one. That's not even thousand gauge, that's really pathetic. But like I say, it's not amazing. It's still, even several pumps, but it would still actually lift enough water to start the siphon. It's one of those things where you wouldn't have thought it would work, but it does. It's as simple as that. Just cut two holes out push the plastic thing back on and then cut around there so you can see how it works pull it up, lifts the water up the siphon, starts the siphon going and then once it starts the water rushing past just lifts that up which is great it drops back down against the spring and I'll get that back together there's my adjustable spanner collection rather limited collection here's the big one and look at that it's amazing. Exactly the same engineering use, but oh, it's just fabulous. I like the juxtaposition, personally. Right, now the lid's back on, and everything's put away. I've just dried up all the water and everything. It's the foot pedal. Foot. Oh, I see. 
<laughs> Super, excellent. That is going to be so nice after all these years of slowly having to press loads of times. Brilliant. Running out of room, you say, but you have a clear bench. So what I want to do now, now the toilet's fixed, is to put this part of the kit together, which I love doing. I love putting these different bits together. The thing is, this room is increasingly like one of those puzzles where you've got one free square, because in order to clear this, I've had to put them there. I can't use a laser cutter now, but that's OK. I've got most of the bits along here, and I just remembered with the battery bits, these bits, I've improved the design because the clock manufacturers very kindly, or annoyingly, put a little piece of plastic there to retain the um, battery clip, um, which didn't used to be there. Which meant that when I put these that had the same shape both ends, when people wrap wire around them and put them in, they wouldn't sometimes make contact at this end unless you twisted them round somehow. I'm so lucky, I'm lucky, I'm so pleased that I remember to adjust that. So after many experiments I've come up with one that does fit round. So that's brilliant. The next day. These have been setting, all of the resin's been setting, and I'm really pleased because look, they do peel off perfectly. Look at that. They don't take the silver foil with them, the adhesive's left, slightly concave, but that doesn't matter. Just collecting them on here, and they're not sticky. The only thing, no, not sticky, I think I said that. The only thing is, these blocks on the outside, I need to wait, I think, till they're a little bit harder, because they're still a little bit sticky, and then hopefully they'll pick off. But as far as airtight seals are concerned, that's brilliant. And the fact that cutting these out on the laser cutter from 10mm thick, and then checking to see how which ones fitted and which ones didn't and having to file the ends smooth and everything else whereas this really has speeded the whole process up when I've got them all sorted I just need to put them on the lathe and drill the hole in the middle or even on the pillar drill actually it might be quicker, hold it against the V-block anyway, I'm going to go and spray some horns up this was the old way of spraying up the horns five of these so I could get ten at a time but it and you just I just simply pushed them in the hole like that that held them nicely but I hated it because I well there wasn't room in my spray booth my booth of sprays you know, road up here and lined low road lined up there spray them up move them over knocking them bumping them there really wasn't room so I felt the need for a new jig and there we have it, a spinny thing. Now I don't know whether this is going to make it easier, more difficult, or virtually impossible. But I'll give it a go, and it will, if it does work, make my life so much easier. This worked really well. I am thrilled. Whee! What I did do in the end was to lower it, as you can see, down, so that I could more, far more easily then spray the inside parts. I'm really pleased with that. That speeded up the process and made it much more efficient and, I have to say, enjoyable. And another success story. These have now been setting for two days just to make sure they're completely set, and they are. That's really exciting. I scraped off the drips on the outside just with a scalpel and they did come off fairly easily and then with a bit of um, wire wool to clean it up. And with the addition of a vacuum, even better still. By the way, if you've got one of these like Hoover pipes, extractors, whatever. I think these are pretty, a fairly standard size. They fit perfectly into the pipe, the, the pipe that goes from the cistern to the toilet bowl. It's just there. These are a standard size, obviously. This is, I've cut the other bits off to make things such as that on the uh, belt sander. Again, just to hold the end of that. That's just the perfect size. So, if you've got one of these, 
get one of these and then slice up all the little bits because it starts off obviously much longer. And I think, cool. What is this amazing contraption? Well, they're the wonderful bead blocks. I have got 40 of these to drill out to 9.5 millimeters, and as before, I was doing it on the lathe, which was taking ages. With my newfound ideas using the wonderful pillar drill, I can now, and I'm just using this to make sure it doesn't fly up. Look at that! Just drilled it out. Absolutely amazing, streamlining it. Some people like football and sports, some people like going to the gym. Personally, what brings me most joy is this part of putting the kit together. The part where you have all the metallic parts and plumbing fittings. There's my photograph, that's what I need to copy, and I've arranged it for the first time as I've got 40 to do in the order in which they have to be selected. That's so exciting. It just addresses any sort of ODC, OCD or whatever. It's all, oh, it just looks so nice as well, you know. There's the pump housing with the flickering candle in it. You've got the bits, those lovely funny shaped odd bits. Drilled them out on the pillar drill, brilliant. There's the bits with the resin in this time, which work really nicely. Stop ends, elbows, big washers. Brass keys to switch it on and off, rubber pipes to connect the horn stop ends for the top of the flickering candle, big bolts to screw on the Munson rings, three different sizes for the horn and the pipe at the bottom. Excellent. I'll try and find a nice film to watch. It's a bit difficult now, Amazon and Netflix are flooding the market with CAC, but that's another story which I may go into at some point. Right, onwards and upwards. Actually, I will tell you, I started watching Faulty Towers on BBC iPlayer on my hideous LG Smart Telly, whatever it's called, ridiculous. Um, and it kept stopping and starting and spluttering, so in the end I thought, OK, well it's sitting on this LG TV that needs an update, so I updated it. Then it won't let me contact or use the BBC iPlayer unless I agree to all of my data going off to South Korea, I think, and other bits of the world. Ah, oh, it's ridiculous. Now I'm back to Netflix, trying to find something decent to watch, going through all the films I think look good and seeing that it says resume, because I watched five minutes previously and thought what rubbish it was. Not even going to attempt to watch any of the ridiculous films made by Netflix, because they're just the equivalent of elevator lift music. Just so insipid, just ah, produced by committee, oh, that just makes me so annoyed when you get such classic films made independently, where is it all going? Anyway, fingers crossed I'll find something nice to watch. Thanks very much for watching, mm, spinny thing, I hope it has been of interest and help. Um, all the information is on my website steamhead.co.uk um, I hope to see you next time.